We are on uh, Daf uh, Tet Amud Bet 9b. We did a nice jump here uh, last time. And the Gemara says as follows the Mishnah in the middle of the page, N Ben, uh, 9b1. N Ben Kohen Mashuach, Bishemen Amishchad, and Mirubam Begadim, El Apar Haba Al Kol Hamitzvot. Only on a cow or a bull that comes uh, for all the mitzvot. So let's just kind of understand what we're talking about here. There are two ways of investiture for a nice word for the Kohen Hagadol Mashuach Milcha Mashuach B'Shem and Amishcha that was anointed by oil and that's how he was made a Kohen Gadol, right? Or if he became Kohen Gadol simply by virtue of the fact that he put on the eight clo- eight special clothing that are u- that are reserved for the Kohen Gadol. So a regular Kohen, how many big Adim does he have? Eight. Four. Yeah. Kohen Gadol has eight. Oh, yeah. Okay. You should know. Tell us what your closet looks like. Okay? Regular Kohen, four big on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, Kohen, Kohen Gadol, on the other hand, has eight big adim. Like as an example, regular Kohen doesn't have the Choshen. Regular Kohen doesn't have the Me'il. Regular Kohen doesn't have the Tzitz. He has the hat, he's got the shirt, he's got the Mechnasayim, and he's got the Avnit, but he doesn't have all these other objects that make up the Begadim of the Kohen Gadol. So by wearing the Shmone Begadim, that's enough to make the person a Kohen Gadol. And the Mishnah says that both of these Kohanim Gedolim, they're identical. Even if one did not have the Shem and Amishcha. Um, but the other one, they're identical except for, but for, Par Haba Al Kol HaMitzvot, the, the bowl that comes uh, for all the mitzvot. So what is, uh, what's this bowl that comes for, for uh, all the mitzvot? So we're going to see in a minute exactly what this, Halakha is and, and what it means, the bull that comes from the mitzvot. Just on the way, I, I just wanted to, uh, to show you, point your attention to Rashi. Rashi says, right, what does it mean, these two Kohanim Gedolim that are, that are separated by way of investiture? The answer is, Kohanim Shishimshu Babayit Sheni, in the second Bet HaMikdash, we already touched upon this earlier, Vav Babayit Arishon, also in the first Bet HaMikdash, in the end, Miyemot Yoshiau, from the days of King Yoshiau, Ve'elach, Shenignaz Tzluchit Shel Shem and Amishcha, the vial containing the Shem and Amishcha, that's V-I-L-E, containing Shem and Amishcha, the anointing oil, was put away. There were many things that were put away in the end of the first temple when they saw what was going on. They saw the direction things were heading in. They were nervous. It would fall into, into the wrong hands. So they hid the stuff, special things that were hidden. Amongst them is the Aron we mentioned, the uh, Ark with the tablets and the, uh, and the what's it called? The wing, the uh, cherubs with the wings. But also is the Shem and Amishcha. Machloket in the Gemara Horayot, exactly what they did with those things. One opinion is that it was hidden in tunnels under the Beit HaMikdash. The other opinion is that it was uh, spirited away to Babel, uh, to Babylonia. However, wherever it actually went to, the point is that they did not have the Shem and Amishcha. So they could not use this anointing oil they would pour on the head of the Kohen Gadol. So therefore, he's, the differentiation is, Parabal Kohen Mitzvah Rashi says, Kohen Mashiach, the Kohen that was anointed, Shehora Heter Bedavar, he said to people, you're allowed to do this. Shizedono Karet, that that thing, if you did it, and you did it on purpose, it would be Karet. Ve'asa Kehora Ato, and the people that he ruled that way on this halacha, they actually went ahead and did it. They ruled according to his ruling. Kehorato. What happens now? They did according to what he said. He made a mistake. Now, that means that their mistake is whose mistake? His mistake. So in such a case, says Rashi, what does the guy bring? Mevi par. He brings a bull as a sacrifice. If the Kohen that is anointed should be responsible for the mistake of the people, this is his Korban. Right at the end of Parashat Vayikra, my Bar Mitzvah Parashat, so I remember. Okay? So it tells you if a man makes a mistake, if a Nasi makes a mistake, if a Kohen makes a mistake, and if the actual Bet Din, the Sanhedrin, make a mistake. So in each one of them, there's a separate Korban brought for the fact that they ruled erroneously, or they did an avera erroneously, so what would they do? They would bring the special korban. Uh, now, this is the korban of the kohen, of the the kohen mashiach. mashiach. Since the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do you it's a get male it? cow. You yeah. see him over sure. There. And some wild of the meat, some of the meat that you're eating is from a bull. Yeah. All right. Now, 
By the way, there's a restaurant in Prague called the King Solomon, called the King Solomon restaurant, that they specialize in serving kosher foods that are not common. So venison, as an example, deer meat, pheasant, bison, all these random foods that you would never, you never had, but they're all kosher, right? It's gamey, they say. Right? Dry. Yeah, what, bison or, or bison fe- venison. venison? Pheasant you had? I never had pheasant. Had, had, what is pheasant? It's, like a bird. it's a, bird. one of the birds. It's a, it actually used to be a bird that was favored by royalty, yeah. um, especially in um, like the Anglo-Saxon royals. That was a big deal. They used to they go hunt pheasant, pheasant hunting. Yeah. yeah, and it was considered a, a delicacy. Exactly, the beagle dogs. They would chase them down. Now, the crazy thing is that the Pasuk, when it says the Kohen Gadol, what does it call him? Look at the pasuk. Exactly. Im hakohen hamashiach yechta. So what the, the, the Mishnah is pointing out is, the you have these two guys, 100% full-fledged kohen gadol for everything. But if the pasuk told me a halacha and called him by a moniker, kohen hamashiach, what must that tell me? That he was anointed by one. Only if he was anointed in this way. Okay? Now, that, since that's the case, so there's no, there's no difference between them, except for this case, where the Pasuk specifically delineated his, his name based on his anointed uh, capacity. Okay? El ha-par ha-ba'al kol ha-mitzvot. En ben kohen mishamesh le kohen she'avar. What if you have a kohen that is currently in office? Okay? Versus kohen le she'avar that already left the office. Rashi says, What is the case of a Kohen that passed out of office? You don't get four years and then you retire. Generally, you were there until you died. So what is this relevant halakha that you're telling me? There's no difference between this guy and that guy. You could say, but except maggots. You could say, except uh, six feet under. So why are you saying there's no difference? The answer is, here's a case where there's a Kohen that was a Kohen, but isn't now. If there was a specific reason that happened with this Kohen that made him Pasul. Okay? Tamir. Where do we find that? Masechet Yoma. Good try, good try. Masechet Yoma. Masechet Yoma. Right? I just decided to say Tanit. Right? I knew you can't be wrong. No, if ever I say we learned in, then you know, you know, it's a. That's the qualifier. Yeah, if I say we learned, what other Masechet do we learn? Okay? So Masechet Yoma. Masechet Yomah, one of the first Mishnayot in Masechet Yomah describes the Kohen Gadol that was put aside, he was trained for the day, but every Kohen Gadol had an understudy. Because what happened if, God forbid, on Erev Kippur, on the night of Kippur, the Kohen saw he had a, a seminal emission. What happened if he fell asleep and in his dream he had a wet dream? That's literally what the Mishnah says. He becomes impure. He can't. Now you have the Jewish people have the Korbanot of Yom Kippur. They have no Kohen Gadol. So there's a Kohen Gadol understudy. It's called the Sigan Kohen Gadol. If the guy becomes Tamid, is what we do. But in fact, in order to make sure that doesn't happen, what do we do? Not sleep. We keep the Kohen Gadol mm-hmm. up all night. Exactly. Yeah. He doesn't wear his shoes, cold water. They, they're doing this if he's falling asleep. They're making him move around. The Mishnah describes what do we do in order that, God forbid, we shouldn't put ourselves in a situation where, where something will derail the process of the Kohen Gadol. So, if you have a Kohen Gadol, irabo pesul, that for whatever reason, there's a pesul in him, uminu acher tachtav, and they appointed someone else instead of him. Ve'avar psulo, what happens now, that the reason why he was disqualified now disappears, ve'chazar la'avodato, he gets his job back. Ve'eviru haba tachtav, harishon, and now they moved the one that came instead of him, harishon karui mishamesh, ve'hasheni avar. Rashi says, we're not talking about the guy who just gave up his position. He's the Avar. This is the new guy. He's the Mishamesh. Rather, the other way. The other way. We're talking about now he goes and gets his job back. That guy who was Kohen Gadol for a day, he's the Kohen She'avar. That was. This guy who's now uh, in the role, he's the Mishamesh. That That's what Rashi says. Okay? So, um, there's no other way for you to be like out of your role besides for dying. I, I, I would imagine, I think that there's a scenario where a guy could give up the role. Now, the guy would ne- that's not something that would happen, but that would not preclude that from being the halakha were it to be the case. Like 
Yes, and there have been popes that stepped down. Yes. The chief, the chief down. rabbi of England is a lifetime position. Lord Jonathan Sachs stepped down from the position before he passed away. You know, you have scenarios that, for whatever reason, so someone decides they don't they want the job anymore. Out of character, they still kept, have, kept the job. No, if there was a reason why that they he should not have the job anymore, they would die anyway. It would take them out. If the guy behaved mm-hmm. out of character. He wouldn't make it out of the out of the uh, Kodesh Hakodeshim the next year. Ela par yom kipurim. So what's what's the scenario that not Rashi says? She if shayla have ishnaim. The reason why that there's no difference between them is because par yom kipurim they can't both bring because you could only bring one. The chen also asirita efa the tenth of the efa which is the the minchat chavitin of the Kohen Gadol, that Shebuchol Yom, that happens every day, so the Mishnah brings, and this, I just wanted to read Rashi, because I think Rashi is learning this in a unique way, the way Rashi is understanding the Mishnah. Um, you can't bring two pars on Yom Kippur, and you can't bring two Asiri Taifas on, on uh, of the Kohen Gadol, because it's only one Korban that's brought on behalf of the Kohen Gadol. So if there's one in office, and one that's out of office, the one that's out of office loses out on his on his on his ability, what does the Gemara do each and every time we learn in Ben? The Gemara begins with a qualifying statement, right? What's the qualifying statement? Says the Gemara, you just told me that there's no difference between them, right? And the difference between them, between let's go back. To, we're going the first case now, which is Kohen anointed versus Kohen who put on the clothes. Okay, you just told me the only difference is uh, the power that he brings. When he rules on something, and the people make a mistake on based on what he said, okay? Says the Gemara, Halenyan Pariyom Kipurim Vasiritaifa. When it comes to the Pariyom Kipurim, which Rashi already explained to us, you can't bring two, right? Vasiritaifa. When and the tenth of the Efa of the Kohen Gadol, Zevizes Shavin. How the guy became Kohen Gadol is not relevant because obviously, you, you, the reason in the second instance that the, you can't both bring, that the difference between the Kohanim is because you can only bring one. One's in, one's out. If, if here, there's only one, but he got in this way or he got in this way, he's still only one. So obviously he would bring that Korban, he would bring that Korban, um, the, the Korban of the Parhe Lem Davar, if he, uh, if he brought the, if he, uh, sorry, the Pariyom Kippurim and Asiri Taifa, if he became Kohen Gadol only by putting on the clothing. Says the Gemara, if that's the case, that, um, the Kohen Gadol, who only put on the clothes, does not uh, does not bring the Parhelem Davar. And we explained why, because the Pasuk specifically says, Mashiach. Says the Gemara, Maknitan, we have a, a, a Mishnah, the Lokir Bimeir, that does not go according to Rabbi Meir. The Rabbi Meir, if it's Rabbi Meir Hatanya, we have a Braita of Rabbi Meir saying something different than the Mishnah. Mirubah Begadim, uh, a Kohen Gadol, Mirubah Begadim means more clothes. What are we talking about over here? Not a Syrian woman on a Pesach program, but rather <laughs> Mirubah Begadim means eight, the eight clothing object of the Kohen Gadol, Mevi Par, the guy who became that way by putting on more clothing, Mevi Par Haba Al Kola Mitzvot. Even he brings the Par Helem Davar. Divrei B'Meir, Hamim Omrim, Enam Eno Mevi, the Chachamim say Eno Mevi. So who's our Mishnah that says that that's the difference between these two cases? That's the Chachamim. But according to Rabbi Meir, the Kohen, that ha- now how would he learn the Mishnah? How would he learn the Pasuk, excuse me? My Ta'amad Rabbi Meir. What is the reason of Rabbi Meir? The Tanya, because the Brayta says, Mashiach, the verse says Mashiach, which specifies if the guy became the Kohen Gadol based on the fact that he was anointed with the oil. In the Ela Mashuach B'Shem and I know from the Pasuk only someone who has uh, that quality of being the Kohen Gadol because of the oil. How do I know that if he put on the extra clothing and that's how he became the Kohen Gadol? By the way, I always wondered. The guy sends his clothing to the, to the what's it called? To the cleaners. You yeah. see the, you're a, you're a Kohen, you see the guy's clothing hanging on the hanger, you put him on. Run down the Kohen Gadol? Apparently. I don't think so. It's not how it works. Yeah, I mean. By the way, the Kohen Gadol's clothing was, was tailor-made for him. Because the Kohen Gadol, the clothing of the Kohen has to be exact in size. Did you know that? Yeah. So it's all tailor-made clothing. So it couldn't be revealed. It, was, it, to be, it has to be exact fit. That can't, be extra, measure. can't be extra material. Can't bespoke, be too short. Bespoke. Right? Bespoke. bespoke, exactly. Okay, Talmud Lomar, right? So, how do I know 
um, that the clothing, the guy who became that way because of the clothing without the oil, how do I know that he also has it? Tamud Lomar HaMashiach. If the Pasuk was trying to say, Kohen Mashiach, the one that was anointed, it would have said, Kohen Mashiach. Why did it say HaMashiach? It's using the terminology of Mashiach as a adjective. You understand that? Not as a verb. Not the Kohen that was anointed, but rather the anointed one. What is the anointed one? Who is the anointed one? The Kohen Gadol. So it didn't mean to use exclusionary language in terms of whether or not that's how he got the job, but rather the one that usually gets the job this way, if that guy makes a mistake in Halakha and everyone follows him, then he would bring the, the so Tal Kohen Gadol. Kohen Mashiach, it's like Kohen Gadol. It's an adjective. So the Pasuk says Kohen HaMashiach. So is that an adjective? Im HaKohen HaMashiach is an adjective. Right. But it's not an adjective specific to the verb of being anointed. Right. It's, not, it's not the Kohen that was anointed. Correct. It's, it's, it's like the anointed one. Correct. Like, let me, I'll, give you, I'll just give you a simple example, right? Um, we, uh, today, we have this idea that a president is voted into office in America. It doesn't work this way in every country, right? In some countries, you vote a, a party into office, and the party puts a leader forward. But in our country, right, the president is the person who is voted in, you, you know, by the majority of the people, obviously, depending on the, on the electorate, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But... In general, it's the person elected by the people into that job. So imagine we call the president the elected one. How about you have a president that gets shot? Who's the president now? Vice, vice president. But he's not elected. How about if the president and the vice president get shot? So I believe it goes to the secretary of state. No, president, right? no, uh, pro tempore of the uh, Senate. It's not Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House. I think it's Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House. Okay, okay, so it's Speaker of the House. So there's now the Speaker of the House, for sure. He was not even voted on a ticket. But imagine you called him the elected one. McCarthy barely got the job. Yeah. McCarthy, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There was one president in the history of the United States that was president and slept through his presidency. There was a period of time, I think it was something like eight hours, where there was no president of the United States. So it by default shifted to this, to this guy. The guy had no idea what was going on. So he went to bed. But the hours, had he been up, he would have been acting president of the United States. States. So the, the joke goes, it was a guy who slept through with his entire U.S. presidency. That's funny. I never heard that. Isn't that, isn't that wild? I love Heather I know Okay, that. now, <laughs> listen to this. This is wild. Because, again, you would call him the president, the prime minister, the elected. Guys are nobody. But you, he still carries the technical term of Kohen HaMashiach. So Rabbi Meir says, that's just an easy way of calling the guy by his title. The fact that later on in history, something would happen which would preclude him from having that, having got to the office that way, that's immaterial, okay? Let's carry on. By the way, I love the idea, just, just to, Rabbi Meir, I feel, would have been an excellent lawyer. Because how does every lawyer begin writing a contract? Hereafter referred to as. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> The Kohen Mashiach, hereafter referred to as the Kohen Mashiach. The Kohen God, those are going to be referred to by this term. It doesn't, he's not actually, doesn't mean that he's actually that. It means that the Kohen Gadol is called this. That's how Rabbi Meir understands that verse, okay? The Gemara asks, okay, ukimna, right? What are we going to, where are we going to illustrate that the Mishnah is going to go? The law can Rabbi Meir, not according to Rabbi Meir. So you just told me that the Mishnah is clearly not according to Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir holds that a Kohen not anointed still brings a par he'elem davar, okay? A par who, where uh, he advised someone to do something and then they followed his advice. But that, if that's the case, so the Mishnah is not going, going to be Meir, it's going, going to Chachamim. And Masefa, let's look at the end of the Mishnah. And Ben Kohen, Mishnah, Mishnah, Kohen, Shavar, a Kohen who's in the office versus the Kohen that's out of the office, as we explained, which is referring to a case where there was a psul, something that precluded him from being in the office. So his understudy stepped up. Now his psul disappears. The guy now swaps back, take his, takes his job. And this fellow who was president of the United States for eight hours now goes back to being an understudy of the Kohen Gadol. So this guy now, he's a Kohen Gadol She'avar. Ela, par yom ha-kippurim. Um, you're telling me that there's no difference between them except for the, the, the par of yom ha-kippurim. 
that is his bull, okay, that he brings on that day, and the tenth of the Efa that is also brought uh, by the Kohen Gadol. That, that's the difference between, between this person, because oh, you can only bring one. They're alike for everything else, uh, except for these two things. This part of the Mishnah actually does follow the opinion of Rabbi Meir. The Brayta tells us, If there was a problem with the Kohen, and we appointed another Kohen in his stead, right? Now the, the problem goes away. The first guy, he goes back to his office, and the second guy leaves the office. Sheni, Kol mitzvot gedola alav. The second guy, the second Kohen, who is no longer, he's now lost that position, right? What's the, what happens with him? Kol mitzvot gedola alav. He has, he maintains all of the mitzvot of a Kohen Gadol. Devrei Meir. Those are the words of Meir. Rabbi Yosei Omer, Rishon Chosen Avato. Rabbi Yosei says, I agree with you. The first guy now gets his job back. Now that whatever was pasul about him went away. This guy now is murfed. He can't be Kohen Gadol because the other guy took his job back. But he also cannot be Kohen Hediot. Why? Because once he is served as Kohen Gadol, it doesn't apply, it doesn't make sense for him to now be serving as a, as a Kohen Hediot. Okay? Uh, he can't be either a, 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 a regular Kohen. A four Begadim Kohen. Okay? Now, <clears throat> where are we? Maase. Now, we have to understand so why that's the case. Session. We'll see in a minute exactly why. Now, the Gemara is going to bring the story to back that up. Maase. Says the Gemara. Berebi Eli Ezeb. Maase. Be Amar Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi said. Be Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi, the son of Rabbi Yossi. Ben Ula Mitzipori. Okay? <clears throat> there was uh, there was a story that Rabbi Yossi said that happened with Rabbi Yossi ben Ulam. Okay, sorry, Michila. <laughs> from Tzipori, from the city of Tzipori, a, a, a pesul happened to him. The Kohen Gadol minuhu tachtav, and they appointed this Rabbi Yossi ben Ulam instead of. That Kohen Gadol. And the story came before the Chachamim. Everybody holds this way. The first guy gets his job back. You don't lose your job because you had a temporary pisul. He can't be the Kohen Gadol now because the other guy's in the job. And he can't be the Kohen Gadol. Why? He can't be the Kohen Gadol because if you have two Kohanim Gedolim, that's going to cause a fight between... Uh, him and the other Kohen Gadol. Each one's going to be vying for the position. Kohen Hediot, Mishu Ma'alim Bakodesh Velo Moridim. Exactly as Ray said. You can't go down once you went to the higher level of Kiddusha. Okay? So he's in, a, in limbo. He maintains status, but he's not acting? Sorry? He maintains status, but not acting? So the, the, it doesn't actually say what, what he is. It just says that he can't be, he can't be both. Rabbi Meir said he's Kohen Gadol for every mitzvah except for these two. The other opinion says, and that's the opinion of the Chachamim, that he's not Kohen, but he can't be a Kohen Gadol and he can't be Kohen Idiot. Okay? Now, would he be next in line? I'd assume so. You know why? Because he was already next in line. He reversed back to that role. No, what I mean is, I mean is forget, forget the fact. He was worthy of being the number two guy. How do you know? Because he was the number two guy. Now, if the number guy, one guy dies, who's the number two guy? Still the same number two guy. The right. point is just that he can't do the acts of service of a Kohen Hediot now because Ma'alim Bakodesh Velo Moridin. Is the number two guy Kohen Hediot? No. So the guy who gets elevated and gets, you know, demoted, is avar, murfed. No, but he's, he's just re- hanging? But he's just hanging. He's a Kohen he can't go back. Originally, he's a Kohen Hediot. Is he, he still can't go the back. second guy? He can't go back. Yeah. Why? He's num- I said he's the second guy. Why? He can be elevated again to the first guy. Yes. Oh. Why? Because because he was number two. Right. When is the case where he would become Kohen Gadol, where the other guy steps he's down, right. dies, yeah. whatever? So he's, he's, on the side. he's yeah, he's waiting. He's Kohen Gadol in waiting. Okay, uh, and and again, my point is the reason why I'm bringing that in is that he's not next in line because he was murfed. Uh-huh. He's next in line because he was always next in line. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Let's let's continue. So now 
Now that we've established this, I just want to make sure that everyone has the macro view and didn't lose that in terms in, instead of the micro view. But he said also, he said above, that he has to hold all those, all the responsibility, all the uh, laws of a Kohen Gadol and now on this number two guy. That was Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir said that. So let's, let's review, okay? We have a Mishnah. The first part of the Mishnah says that there's no difference between the Kohen Mashiach and the Kohen Merubah Begadim. Whether you were investiture happened because of the anointing oil or your investiture happened because you put on the clothing, there's no difference in either case. The guy's fully fledged Kohen Gadol. Except okay? For Except for the bull, Helem Davar. Why is that the case? Why is that the case? Um, we'll see in a minute in the, in the Mishnah. Second case is um, there's no difference between Kohen in office, Kohen um, pushed out of office, which as we explained means if he was uh, in to to substitute for the guy who had a time of Pesul, then he leaves again. No difference between those two Kohanim Gedolim, except for the par of Yom HaKippurim and the Asiri Ta'ifa. So those are the two parts of the Mishnah. Ask the Gemara, hold up. Okay, first part of the Mishnah, who's that going according to? The Gemara answers, it must be going according to Re- the Chachamim, not according to Meir. Why? Because Rabbi Meir said there's no difference between the guy who got in via oil or the guy who got in via clothing um, in, in terms of bringing the par he'elem davar where you messed people up in terms of your psak halacha and they followed your psak halacha. Clear? So the first part of the Mishnah is going according to the, the Chachamim, not Rabbi Meir. Why does Rabbi Meir say what Rabbi Meir says? That we had a divesting uh, a, pro, a part of the Gemara, with the Gemara, uh, diverting part of the Gemara, but the Gemara explained that the reason why Rabbi Meir says what he says, even though the simple logic would be according to the Chachamim, because it says the word Mashiach in the Pasuk, says Rabbi Meir, it doesn't say Mashiach, it says HaMashiach. Since it says HaMashiach, that means it's an adjective, not a noun. Clear? If that's the case, first part of the Mishnah is going clearly according to Chachamim. Es Gemara, one second. Second part of the Mishnah is going according to Rabbi Meir. Why? Because there's only two options. Rabbi Meir or Rabbi Yossi. The Brayta says, the Rabbi Meir says, in a case where someone loses their position, what happens after the other guy gets good? We put him back in his office. What do we do with number two guy? He's Kohen Gadol for everything. With regards to all the mitzvot, he's the Kohen Gadol. Second opinion says, no, second guy is a nobody, Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi follows the opinion of the Chachamim, and that's an actual story that happened with Rabbi Yossi by Ben Ulam, that since the guy lost his position, he can't be Kohen Gadol because of Eva, because of Machoket. Can't be, he can't be Kohen Hediot because of Ma'alim Bakodesh and Lo Moridim. So what happens to the guy? The guy is in limbo until that opportunity rises again. Yes, the Gemara. That means that what you're telling me is, second part of the Gemara, has the Mishnah has to be going according to Rabbi Meir, because there's only two options, Rabbi Meir or Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi says he's a nobody. Rabbi Meir says he's a Kohen Gadol for everything, which seems absolutely in line with what we're saying, which is that there's no difference between Kohen Gadol number one and Kohen Gadol number two, who's out of a job, except for these two halachot. That's the following of the opinion of Rabbi Meir. Es the Gemara now, Resha Rabbanan, Besefer Rabbi Meir, is the beginning of the Mishnah, the Rabbanan, the Chachamim. And the second part of the Mishnah, Rabbi Meir, now let's just be clear. This would not normally be a problem. Because the first part of the Mishnah is following one opinion. Okay. The second part of the Mishnah is following another opinion. Over here it's a problem because the first part of the Mishnah is specifically not Rabbi Meir. It's the Chachamim versus Rabbi Meir. And you chose the Chachamim. The second part of the Mishnah now is choosing Rabbi Meir. So why would the Mishnah, if the Mishnah is Rabbi Meir himself who said it, who would it be? It would be the other opinion. So the Mishnah, the Gemara is bothered by the lack of symmetry in the beginning of the Mishnah not being Rabbi Meir and at the end of the Mishnah being Rabbi Meir. Amar Rav Chizdar, Rav Chizdar said, yes, Resha Rabbanan, Sefer Rabbi Meir. The beginning is the Rabbanan, Sefer is according to Rabbi Meir. Okay? That's, it's not a problem for it to be that way. Okay? Uh, the Gemara answers another answer, Rabbi Yosef. Amar, Rabbi Yosef says, no, Rabbi, he, it's according to Rabbi. The Nasiv Le Aliba de Tanai. The, the Mishnah here is Rebbe, and since the Mishnah is Rebbe, Rebbe Yehuda, therefore it's not a problem that he's picking and choosing. In one case he holds like Rebbe Meir, and in one over Rebbe Yossi, in another case he holds like the Chachamim instead of Rebbe Meir. Now let's, let me give you just a two second background on this before we move on. The Mishnah was arranged by whom? Rebbe Da'anasi. The Mishnah in general is quoting whom? Few guys. Oh, it's quoting a lot of people, but in general, those are my trick words. Rabbi Meir. Meir. We have a rule that says Stam Mishnah, Rabbi Meir. Mishnah with no label attached, a white label Mishnah, 
Who is it quoting? Rabbi Meir. Why? The Chida writes in Shema Gedolim that the reason for that is that Rabbi Meir had a language and an ability to explain things which were uniquely suited to that generation. So therefore, since his elucidation of the Mishnahic principles was so, was so clearly elucidated, was so clearly expressed, so when Rabbi Yehuda was choosing between a Mishnah that he got from Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, from uh, Rabbi Akiva, from this one, from that one, his default position was to choose a Mishnah that was said in the words of Rabbi Meir. Okay? So therefore, Stam Mishnah, you come to a Mishnah with low label on it, who is it? Rabbi Meir. Now if you have a proof to indicate that it is not Rabbi Meir, it's not a problem, but our natural go-to is that it's Rabbi Meir. Now, with that in mind, you understand the Gemara's question and the Gemara's second answer. The Gemara says, one second, you have half the Mishnah is going to Rabbi Meir. What's going on? The beginning is Rabbi Meir, the end is Rabbi Meir. And we know that generally, a no-label Mishnah is Rabbi Meir. So, what's going on in the beginning of the Mishnah? Answers the Gemara. First answer is, yeah. Well, the beginning of the Mishnah, Rabbi, Rabbi took a piece of Mishnah that was from the Rabbanan, and then Rebbe took, like he usually does, a piece of the Mishnah for Rebbe Moshe. Rebbe Meir happens to be packaged them together. The second opinion is no. The Mishnah here is actually the words of Rebbe Yudah and Asi. And he's telling you, he holds in one case, like the Chachamim, so he brought it that way. And in the second case, he holds like Rebbe Meir. Clear? Good. Macro, micro, good? Yes. Carry on. The Mishnah continues. A little bit of a background. En ben ba gidola, le ba ketana, el pesachim. The only difference between a Bama Gedola and a Bama Ketana is um, with regards to Pesachim. Now, let's just understand. What does the word Bama mean? Bama only means a Mizbeach. Elevated place. Yeah. And by the way, a Bima and a Bama are the same thing. Mm. A Mizbeach is an elevated place. You take a platform of any sort of type or kind. It could be a square-looking Mizbeach with a ramp that we're used to. It could be a big stone. It could be a mountaintop. Any of those things could be called a bama, okay? And since that's the case, so the Gemara now is differentiating between bama gedola and bama ketana. Let's look at Rashi. Rashi on the spot says, Enefresh, Peshat hetera bamot, ben bama gedola, ze mizbeach shel Moshe beodo benovi gedon, le bama ketana, mizbeach shel yachid, shiko yachid viachid, ose bama laatsmo. Rashi is telling us, he's giving us the background to this case. There was something called gezerat habamot which means the decree against Mizbechot, against Bamot. What does that mean? Up until a certain point in history, you wanted to bring a sacrifice to God, no problem. You get on Amazon, Prime, they deliver you that day a Bama from China, perfect, uh, amazing, discounted from AliExpress, cheaper than the one you get from Eichler's or, uh, or Mekor. No problem. Any kind of Bama, of any material, in any place, Bring a korban, you're good to go. There comes a point where they dedicate a specific place to bring korbanot. At that point, any bama in any other place is almost like a statement against the place that was dedicated as a place for God. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So as an example, I'll just give you a simple example. There's a case, I don't know how much time we're going to have, so I'll just give you this, I want to make this clear before we move on. One of the worst people in the history of the Jewish people is a person by the name of Yeravam ben Nevat. Anyone know who he was? The bad king. Excellent. The bad king. Ask, a, uh, ask your grandson who the bad king is. He'll tell you, Paro, Achashverosh, Antiochus, Antiochus, the wicked king. This why is, is he, one of ours. Why this is one of ours? Yeravam, he was one of ours. What was his story? The, why, what made him a bad king? He put the, uh, the Abadazara all around. But the Abu Dazara, not all around Yerushalayim, specifically where? When you went down by the, uh, when you had to went down. We had this when we learned Masechet. Yes, we did. Ta'anit. Ta'anit. I was giving you the opening. Oh. We had this in Ta'anit. What was the case? What was exactly the case? Let's, let's, let's just review. You had a king from, that was from the tribes of Yehuda. And you had a break in the kingdom. Oh, this is after Shilomo. After Shilomo, excellent. A Rehavam. This is a man who should know anything to do with Shilomo, right? <laughs> you have a, what's it called? You have a kingdom of uh, Malchut Bet David. There comes a point where God says to Shilomo, because of your mistake, not in your lifetime, but the kingdom will be torn asunder. And when does that happen? It happens during the kingdom of Rehavam, 
which is the son of Shilomo. Now there's a king from the tribe of Yehuda, and there's a king from the tribe David, of David. of no Yehuda is the David, oh, yeah, and a and a kingdom of the tribe of Yis, of, of Yisrael. Two tribes hang together. Who is that? Benjamin and Yehuda. The rest of the tribes separate. That's and, the ten the tribes. tribes. Okay, the ten lost tribes happens much later, but at that time there's two kingdoms: the kingdom of Yehuda and the kingdom of Yisrael. The battles that are waged between the two are bloody and personal. But what gives rise to the first problem between a Davidic king and an Israelite kingdom? A specific little known law. And that is that when you come to the Beit HaMikdash on the holidays, all the Jewish people had a mitzvah to come to the holidays. They had a mitzvah to gather. They have a mitzvah to gather on Hakel at a certain time in the seventh year, the seventh year, etc., etc. They all come. You have all the Jews. Every Jew is there. So who's the and they read from the, they, the, the king reads from the Torah. Oh, wow. And every single person in the, in the Azara, every Jew is stood on their feet and one person is given license to sit down. The king from, from the, king from 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 the Yehuda. tribe of Yehuda. And he was in Yehuda, so there was... Yeravam no. says, forget that. What, all of Israel is going to see that he's a true king and I have to stand? No way. Not happening. So at every fork in the road that led to Jerusalem from everywhere else in Israel, he stood, Midan ve'ad Naftali, from every portion that was given to every other tribe, he put idols and a mizbeach. So you're supposed to go to Yerushalayim, make a left, right over here, chalas, bring a korban to Avodah Zarah. Because of kavod, because of ego. This Yerav Amin Nevat was on a level that he was, I just want to tell you the story, because we're at 6.32 now. I just want to tell you the story. Yerav Am causes the entire Jewish people to go astray. Single-handedly, Turns all of you have Kiruv in the world today. He did Rikuk. He's the anti-Chabad. He took, he took everyone off the derech and made them Oved Avodah Zarah. God comes to Yeravam and says to him, Do Teshuvah, Vani, Veata, Uben Yishai, you and I, and the son of Jesse, who's that? David Ben Yishai. Me, you, and David Amelech, at Tayel Began Eden. We're gonna, we'll, we'll walk together in the Garden of Eden. God says that to you. What's Yeravam's response? Mi Barosh. Who's first? Me or David? God says, David. He says, if so, I'm not interested. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Now, sick. Now, here's the saddest part. He would have been first. Let's review. God says to Yeravam, Do teshuvah, chazor becha, ve'ani, ve'ata, uben Yishai. What did God say? Who comes first? Me, you, and David. Who's first? Yeravam. Because he asks, God says, now you lost a spot. Now you're number two. I always thought to myself, two thoughts. Thought number one, how big was Yeravam? How big was he as a person that but for this mistake, right? And God says, if you do Teshuvah, I'll put you first. He would have been before King David. Or maybe he was that bad that if he did Teshuvah... Second answer. Yeah. Then Take it away. It would be the highest level of Teshuvah. Because it was so far the other what way. What does the Gemara say? If, if a person does Teshuvah me'ahava, what happens? The innermost layer with Hashem. No, more than that. person does Teshuvah from love, what happens? All of his mitz- all of his averot are turned into mitzvot. 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 Who had more averot than Yeravam? If he would have done Teshuvah, all of those flip. He becomes more than David HaMelech. Yeravam says, who's first? God says, now you're not first anymore. Why? Because now it's not from love. It's from so love. now you don't get the treasure trove of, mitzv- of Averot that are turned into mitzvot. So now you're only after King David. It's not just so, like a trick. It's not just like a trick, yeah. exactly. Now you asked, the reason is not from love. The reason is from uh, self-interest. That's the case. You don't have such a zechut. So the Gemara is now going to talk about Bamot. But Bamot are Bamot for Avodah Zarah or Bamot for Kedusha. But there was a time when every Jew could bring a Bama, could bring a Korban in his backyard to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Baruch Adonai Le'olam.